and all I had to do was use my imagination. I do not believe the conditions that produced a situation that demanded a song like that. Hello everyone and welcome to session three of the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. My name is Randy Henderson and I am one of the Black Feminist Reading Circle members of this online group. This session runs from January 20th until June 2nd and includes two week long breaks. Our democratically selected reading material is Harriet A. Washington's book, Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. Our book group meets each Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8 on the Google Plus Hangouts on Air platform. You may find the, Glo the Global Black Feminist Reader Circle on Google Plus, YouTube, and Facebook. And always feel free to join us in reading our story together. I'm tonight's moderator, Georgia Moses from Columbia, South Carolina. Let's go around and everyone introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Edwina Marchenko. I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm located here in Utah now. Hello, I'm Brandy, and I'm viewing from Atlanta. And I'm really excited to see everybody tonight. And I'm happy that I'm on time for like the first time in months. So <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. 
my name is Nell Walker, and I'm joining uh, from uh, Connecticut. Welcome. Thank you, Benita. Uh, my name is uh, Joel J.J. Jones uh, from um, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, and uh, just glad to be here amongst the living, not the dead. All right. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. Hi, I'm Michelle Odom, and I'm in Brooklyn, New York. We can get started on Chapter 8, The Black Stork, The Eugenic Control of African American Reproduction. The Black Stork, The Eugenic Control of African American Reproduction. This chapter illustrates the various ways the reproductive freedom of African Americans have been assaulted by discouraging the birth of inferior black children and by curtailing the fertility of black mothers. Americans of various backgrounds and allergenes, allergenes, allegiances, allegiances participated in this eugenics movement. Germans and Americans shared their flawed eugenics practice and beliefs, many of them evolving into current laws and social, economic, and medical policies today. Many women and men have been harmed by these codified beliefs with no compensation. Some of our own black leaders were complicit in this. We still live with the false specter of the crack baby, stigmatized teenage girls as hypersexual and chose to punish and medicate rather than counsel and protect. Okay. Thank you, Vanita. Eugenics, a medical philosophy, question mark. When Barbara Harris, founder of Children Requiring a Caring Community, K, Crack, when Barbara Harris, founder of Crack, comments about the women and men who seek her services, we don't allow dogs to breed, we spay them. We neuter them. We try to keep them from having unwanted puppies. And yet these women are literally having litters of children. She is being totally honest. That's how she feels. And she believes her organization is helping society. When Rudolf Hess, right-hand man to Adolf Hitler, said National Socialism is nothing but applied biology. He was being totally honest too. His methods may have been a bit more extreme than Mrs. Harris for preventing unwanted puppies, but they worked so well, in fact, that we still feel the effects today. German eugenicists learned a lot of what they knew from American eugenicists. In the early 20th century, geneticists like Francis Galton, cousin to Charles Darwin, discovered the mathematical predictability of human traits. Their goal became to use this knowledge in selective procreation to refine the human race while conquering dysfunction. It was an applied science embraced by scientific and popular levels in the United States and abroad. Biologist Charles Davenport used the applied science of biometrics, the quantitative study of evolution, to conduct research on, the human, on human heredity. Leading to public policy like the National Origins Act of 1924 barred immigrants from southern and eastern European countries as dysgenic. The good uh, proposed society 
use, use the good proposed society use medical information about disease and trait inheritance to end social ills by encouraging the births of good, healthy, and beautiful children. The bad, the bad form of eugenics promulgates weeding out undesirable elements of society by discouraging or preventing births of children with bad genetic profiles, the ugly. Scientists continue to look for and find wild physiological evidence of black inferiority to support and popularize their ideas. It resulted in demonizing black parents, particularly black mothers, as medically and behaviorally unfit. Eugenics undergirded medical social movements that placed black sexual behavior and reproduction under intense scrutiny, leading to disproportionate sterilizations and experimentations. The abominable. Dr. Harry J. Hazelden gained fame and fortune in 1915 during the first wave of the American eugenics movement by exploiting the evil legacy of the black mother. He preyed on the sick, defective infants, leaving them to die or killing them outright. He practiced his negative eugenics. He practiced his negative eugenics very publicly. Following his example to remove the genetically inferior genes from their pool, parents began to recruit doctors to kill their children who were born with birth defects. He took pictures with the bodies of these children and their parents and even made a movie entitled The Black Stork to promote his ideas. Question one. Do you think Barbara Harris is just a woman, mother, citizen who saw a need or problem and attempted to apply a solution or an unconscious eugenicist? Question two. Were you aware of the connection between American and German eugenicists? Barbara Harris, um, I don't know, that was, um, <coughs> I, 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 I guess I would say I think she's, um, an unconscious eugenicist, <clears throat> self-hating black, all, all of that kind of thing. Um, she also, you know how we, we talked about Grandison Harrison and, and what people are willing to do in the name of survival. Grandison Harrison, you'll come across uh, Edwina in chapter five, he was a grave robber, a black man, um, who, who actually started out, at, he was a slave, um, and his assignment was to rob black graveyards for doctors so that they could learn stuff. Yeah, I think I read about him. Yeah, and, um, and but there were plenty other like him that that followed. Um, so you know, I think when survival is our one and only yardstick, um, that it allows us to do all kinds of things that we otherwise otherwise might think are you know abominable. So I think it's possible that some funding body um, offered Barbara Harris some money to set up this program and if she was in the mode of trying to survive, um, she may have said, well, you know, uh, I may, you know, uh, 
I may be a conscious eugenicist, but if it's going to make me some money, then I'm willing to play that role. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. That's an interesting aspect. You you introduced the finances into that. I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have an opinion? I wanted to ask her about the last question pertaining to the German mm -hmm. uh, experimentation and um, of. The, of Reading themselves of an inferior uh, race in connection to how that fit in with the American um, notion of um, the, the uh, geneticists. I think you asked a question at one point pertaining to that. Yes, it was. Were you aware of the connection between the American and German eugenicists and how they shared their information? Somewhat, I was somewhat aware of it. Um, you know, through um, newspaper articles and. Um, and, and reading about the German um, Holocaust, the Jewish Holocaust. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that the Jewish Holocaust was imminently um, connected, could, could, could be possibly connected to uh, or affect what was going on with um, black Americans. Yes, um, that's true. Um, in some of my reading, uh, the background of it, uh, the Germans who actually they um, were practicing uh, um, this ethnic cl type cleansing on different areas in Europe, and when they started corresponding and reading the uh, medical uh, research that the Americans were doing that sort of at the same time they were spurred they were encouraged even more to continue along their lines because of the propaganda the American scientists were coming up with in support of eugenics and so-called racial in, or ethnic inferiority genetically um, or, or their search for the, this elite uh, race. I've forgotten the exact terminology of what they called it. Joel, you're a history buff. Aryan nation. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. So, in other words, you're saying that the Germans were in the process during World War II and onward um, in an effort to create, during the Holocaust, to create ethnic cleansing. Oh, and before that, before the wars, they were, all, they were doing it in Europe, in, in certain parts of sure. Europe, to the Slavs and um, the uh, Romanians mm, and um, some other uh, groups of people. They were practicing, so to speak. The Roman, the Romas, the so-called gypsy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, their their tactics and methods passed on to the American scientists, and they, uh, the Negro, well, the Afro American, the subject of their experiments for ethnic um, cleansing or proving themselves to be. Aryan, um, a part of the Aryan race? I, I didn't hear the first part of your question. Well, what I was going back to was that um, what they were doing in Germany 
Mm -hmm. um, through ethnic cleansing, through the Holocaust and so forth, it affected mm -hmm. the way that um, American scientists looked at the lower classes yeah. here in America, in which uh, would affect the, the Afro-American. I agree with you. I think they fed off of each other. Their their arrogance and, okay. and their search for a perfect race fed off of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would anyone else like to add a comment? Well, in my opinion, you know, just by looking at that, you know, if you're looking at the American Hero Channel, it's just like looking at, you know, a Nazi class. That's what I always call it. You know, you always find out they tell about, you know, the atrocities of the of the Germans, but they really just really teaching more races how to be Nazis, in my opinion. But I just look at the. Um, as the four years in which the, the Nazis, they did, uh, you know, experimentation with the, uh, with, the, with the Holocaust. Now, you compound that kind of activity with about 350 years in what they freely did to the African slave. And so you can see that the Germans, they learned a lot from the Americans. I mean, that's just the cold, hard facts. <laughs> You know. Well, that would sound logical, um, especially during um, the antebellum period when the uh, when you when there was the uh, uh, dissections of Afro Americans uh, <laughs> being um, performed by the doctors. Um, of uh, trying to uh, what discover uh, their anatomy, the functions of their anatomy, and, and the differences between white anatomy and black anatomies. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, and they got to do that. They got to do it every day. If they ran out, they just went, and they go and bought a sick slave, and they can just. Do what they want to do. They can just like they was working on frogs for hundreds of years. And that's the exact thought I had when I took biology class, and I remember dissecting a frog. And I thought of a chapter I had read about Joyce Heck, I believe, in that bottom, bottom and and belly circus. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, whereas he uh, took advantage of um, an African um, slave woman that he called uh, George Washington's mammy mm -hmm. and had in, uh, which you would say, uh, open uh, aut autopsy done. Yeah. For admission. Yeah, that was pretty foul. So I guess you, as um, as you said, the Germans fed off of some of the acts of these um, uh, American uh, physicians and scientists. Yes, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we don't have any more comments about this section, can I get a volunteer to read? I would just say the, 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 the Germans learned everything they knew from the Americans. Uh, there's, there's even a, a, yeah, a comment in this chapter um, that says they thought the American laws were too harsh in some cases. They said the American laws were uh, the the law about um, integrate uh, 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 you know, biracial marriages. 
Yeah, misogyny. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and how many drops of blood, you know, makes you a black person, um, and and you know who you could then marry. And so they said they had more flexibility. You know, let's say for example, Americans said if you have one drop of black blood, um, then you can't marry that. You know, a white person couldn't marry you because that one drop made you black. The Germans might have said, well, you could have five drops. <laughs> <laughs> when they were, you know, when they were talking about, um, I saw on the History Channel that they said, well, you know, well, what made a person of Jewish descent? They said, well, it, if you had um, three grandparents, if you had three grandparents that, that were Jews, then that made you a Jew. 